Okay, we're going to look at how to calculate shearing stresses <coughs> in beams. Okay, to do that, we're going to look at 14.8 example out of your textbook. Um, in this case, we have this rough, solid rectangular timber, and it's going to be subjected to a vertical load, inducing a maximum shear of 7,000 pounds. Calculate the maximum shear stress at the neutral axis, and then calculate the shear stress at 2 inches above and below the neutral axis, and then four inches above and below the neutral axis, and then plot these stresses showing the distribution. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to find our general shear formula, equation 14.8. That says the shear stress equals V times Q, which is the statical moment, divided by I times B. So, A. The maximum shear is going to be at the neutral axis. So I is BH cubed divided by 12. Um, that's our standard formula for a rectangular shape. And I get 100, 1,152 cubic, I mean, inches to the fourth. And then we have to find our statical moment. So the statical moment is going to be different for each one of these calcs. In this case, if we're talking about the neutral axis, it's A times Y bar. A, in this case, is the area above the neutral axis, in which case that's 8 times half of 12, which is 6. 6 times 8 is 48. And then the Y bar here is the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of that half area, in which case that's the area the, the distance divided by 4, which is h divided by 4, which is 3 inches. That means that over this area from the neutral axis to the top, the centroid of that area is 3 inches above the neutral axis. Okay, so when I do that calculation, I get 109.4 psi at the neutral axis. Now, at 2 inches from the neutral axis, Okay, the I is going to be the same, the B is going to be the same, and the V is going to be the same. I'm going to have a different statical moment here. So now, essentially what I'm going to do is I have 2 inches. So this G here is now 2 inches. When G is 2 inches, then the D now is 4 inches, because G plus D is half of H, which is 6. Okay, so my area is 8, which is the width, times 4, which is my D value. Okay, um, so I got 32 square inches, and then my Y bar is going to be this 2 for G, plus another 2 to get to the center right here. So, 4 inches. 4 inches is my y bar. So then I can calculate my statical moment, a times y bar, and I get 128 cubic inches. Now from that I get a shear stress of 97.2 psi. Now this beam is symmetrical, so therefore that negative, that negative 2 inches from the neutral axis, I'm still going to have 97.2. Um, Okay, so let's talk about example 14.9 now. Okay, so a bending member is built up of three steel plates welded together that act as a single unit. It's generally called a plate girder. The girder is subject to vertical loading, which induces a shear of 300K. Calculate the maximum shear stress in the plane in the neutral axis and B, calculate the shear stress at the junction of the flange and the web. Okay, so, so solution. Okay, so to find the moment of inertia um, about that neutral axis, what we do is we take the moment of the area divided by the area times this distance squared. Okay, so in which case our flange, um, the I about the neutral axis is I naught these would be these flanges up here, top and bottom. I naught, which is 1 12th base times height cubed, times B 
times h times d squared. So I get 14,710 inches to the fourth. Now the web, the neutral axis of the web and the neutral axis of the overall section is the same. So the i about the neutral axis is b h squared over 12. In this case, b is this thickness. h is the height, which is the 48 divided by 12. So the total moment of moment of inertia about the axis, neutral axis, is this 4608 plus 2 times these flanges. This was something we got out of chapter 7 and calculated the centroids. Okay, so now I have my total moment of inertia for this plate girder. Okay, so now the shear stress at the neutral axis is, um, we're going to use our shear formula, V times Q over I times B. So in this case, the Q times the flange, the statical moment of the flange, is A times Y bar, which is 16. So that's area of this flange, the 16 times the one and a half times Y bar, which is the distance from the neutral axis up to the neutral axis of the flange, which is 24.75, equals 594 cubic inches. Then I'm going to add to that my Q for the web, the statical moment for the web, in which case this is 24, that's this height, from neutral axis up to the bottom of the flange. Um, times 12, which is the centroid of that area, so halfway up. Okay, so I add these two together, and that becomes my statical moment. Um, so, I get a statical moment of 738 cubic inches. I substitute that into my general shear formula, and I get 13.02 KSI. So now the other thing we wanted to do was find the shear stress at the flange junction, in which case I'm going to create a different statical moment. In this case, it's A times Y bar. Um, so A, in this case, is this entire area of the section, which is 16 by 1.5, times the Y bar, which is this 12, 24.75 and I get 594 cubic inches. Okay, so then I get my shear stress of 328 KSI. Okay, so this is actually the shear stress at the bottom fibers of the flange. But really, what happens here is you got a bind, a bonding between this web and the flange. So really, the distance I'm going to use here for B, the thickness I really need to use for B, is the thickness of the flange, I mean the web here, so it's 0.5. So really I have 10.48 KSI when I use the B of the flange. Okay.